Right, hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Josh, and if you're new here, I am reviewing all sorts of cars on this channel. And because I'm a bit of a car nut, and because of my new job, I've been given access to some pretty cool cars in the past few months. I've tended to lean towards the supercars and what I can get my hands on, you know, the R8s, the Mustangs, the Range Rover SVRs, etc. But I always wanted this channel to be a kind of expose on affordable cars as well as crazy cars because, well, normal people or most people can only afford affordable cars. So I wanted to do reviews that would actually be helpful to the general public as opposed to the kind of super rich. So I actually have a Citroen C3 Picasso 2015 at the moment and this is actually my fifth car now and I've only owned it a few months and I wanted to do a quick review on it because I actually really like it and I didn't expect to but I just wanted to do a very quick review on all the things I like about this car so this is a 1.6 diesel and that's probably one of the first things that is to be said about this car I'm doing an 80 mile round trip at the moment and I'm averaging 55 miles per gallon and I'm not driving slowly. I have a heavy right foot and I am caking it down the M1 and the A38 but I'm still averaging 55 miles per gallon. In the first two weeks of owning this car I was doing about 76 miles per gallon because I was literally cruising at 50 to 60 every single day and it was straight roads. So 76 miles per gallon. If you are looking for a car that's low fuel costs low tax, this is £20 for the year, this might be quite an affordable option. And I think it's quite a good looking car, the old kind of Zara Picasso is quite bubbly, don't really like those, or I never really liked those design, but the space in them was undeniable, and this is much the same. So at the front you have these kind of quarter lights, as well as the rear, but you have quarter lights that kind of extend the dash, so out front it does kind of feel like a van in here, and the visibility is very good, so I can see why these talk to the older generation if you are wanting good visibility it's not to kind of knock into a bollard or a stone or anything like that these quarter lights really help and the extension of the dash does make it feel like a van you've even got a camper van-esque pocket there which is great um, and there are all these little cubby holes you have a cubby hole here you have a cubby hole here and um, there's even a little kind of driver side um, glove compartment the pockets either side are huge you have two um, drinks holders in the front and one kind of in the central rear you have another little cubby hole there's just a lot of room in this it's a very spacious cabin which is something i've really liked about owning this car at the front you have a digital dash which is very clear you have your speed kind of the revs when to change gear because it is kind of trying to be economical then you have your kind of central console with all your information and perhaps because my previous car didn't have bluetooth USB AUX. I am pleased and shocked also that this has all of those things. The Bluetooth works well, it's very easy to use, you just turn the radio on, you press source, obviously the speakers aren't kind of a Burmeister or any sort of Bang & Olufsen unit or setup, but they're not bad. Um, and everything works really well, it's very simple, your mirrors are very easy click, up, down, left, right, your windows. I can see why people like these cars, they're very basic, but they, they do everything they say on the can, it's a Ron Seal type car. You also have cruise control and a limiter which is very easy to use, you just twist this little thing, set the speed you want, and there's buttons behind it. Now when I first used that, it seemed a bit kind of counterintuitive, but it's actually a very easy system to use. In the back, there's plenty of room, and when you fold the seats flat, there's a huge flat bed, and in the boot, there's even a flat bottom, or a fake bottom, sorry, that you can lift. So my granddad, for example, if he was, oh, that's not red. My granddad, who likes to carry jump leads around with him everywhere, under the fake bottom, he put his jump leads and still on top have kind of space for any shopping or anything he's trying to move around and if you wanted to remove the fake bottom you can and then you've just got a slightly deeper boot so it's a very practical car and i've really enjoyed owning this car i've only had it what a month or two and the mileage alone or the mpg alone is something that i've really enjoyed because it's kept prices really low at a time when fuel is two pound per litre having something that is doing nearly 80 miles per gallon has actually turned out to be a bit of a godsend for me. The only thing I would say maybe that could do with improvement is the gear stick. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm a bit of a German snob and German gearboxes tend to feel quite almost gated in comparison to this, but there is quite a lot of play in the gear stick. It almost feels like you're in a lorry and you're kind of guessing. It's not to say the clutch rides or the gearbox isn't good, it just 
feels like there's a bit more play than your German manufacturers, in my opinion. That's the only thing really I can say about this car. But I don't think it's a bad looking car compared to some of the Picassos. And you can pick them up anywhere between four, five, six, seven thousand. So I did get this quite cheap. Um, but what a fantastic little car. And even though, actually, one more thing. The, dry, the passenger glove box is tiny for some reason. I don't know what is under there, maybe kind of an aircon unit or some sort of module. But the cubby holes on top are useful, but the glove box is very small. So that's everything. The Citroen Picasso C3. Yeah, it's pretty good. I would recommend one of these. It's got great visibility. The system's very easy to use. The cruise control is effective and simple. There's a little bit of play in the gear stick, but that might be just because I'm not used to French cars. It has AUX, USB, there's huge amounts of space in the boot. It has a flat bottom. You have a great space to load things if you knock the seats down. There's enough room in here for four adults easily. You have a raised driving position. They're not expensive. They're cheap to run. Tiny little tires, so even the tires are cheap. What a cracking little car.